Thank you, Lord, for loving me. And Lord, I lift your name on high. I think that's a, a powerful thought for us tonight as we finished off this morning looking at the very fact that Jesus had to be lifted up. And the very fact that Jesus was lifted up, that we can lift his name on high. I want to look at John 12 and verse 32. Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. The passage we looked at this morning was also from John chapter 12. At the very end of the lesson, we talked about how Jesus represented the seed. The seed that had to die in order for, uh, for us to be able to be a part of the plant. We actually find that, we just read verse 32, look at verse 23. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. You know, when we look at this concept of the seed. We saw this morning Paul's analogy represented the blessings that God has blessed us with is what we sow in the lives of people around us. Jesus' analogy to the seed comes from the parable of the sower. And I'd ask you to look at Matthew chapter 13. And so, if you will, let's turn to Matthew chapter 13 at this time. We'll look at what Jesus was referring to when he talked about the seed. But before he speaks about it, we understand that he represented it perfectly. The fact that he was willing to, be, to die to himself, be buried, and rise again. And that's how we can lift his name on high today. In verse 3 of Matthew 13, it says, And he told them many things in parables, saying, them being the crowd, in verse 2, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. And we understand that it was from this parable that the disciples questioned Jesus, why do you speak in this way? They didn't quite understand what Jesus was referring to. But I understand we, we've heard this before. Most likely you know what Jesus then explains, uh, that he, he explains this parable. He tells them what he meant uh, by this. He tells us, first of all, what the seed is when he mentions this parable for the sower. Look at verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower, Jesus says. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. So what is it that is sown? It is the seed. And what is that represented? It is the word of the kingdom. So when we are striving to proclaim the word of God, we are instilling seed in the life of people all around us. And we are casting the seeds around as we proclaim the gospel wherever we go, with whatever opportunity we face to uphold the truth of the kingdom. And so we rep are represented by the sowers here. We have an opportunity and we must take advantage of every, every chance we have to proclaim the seed, the gospel message. Verse 20, as for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, Immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, 
and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. You are the sowers. You and I are the sowers. I think sometimes we want to say, well, it's the, it's the preachers or the sowers, the youth ministers or the sowers, because that's what they are paid to do. It's the elders. They have chosen to shepherd the flock. The flock, we just come and we go. What we understand is if we are to follow Christ, we are all to be sowing the seed of the kingdom, to be sowing the gospel message and you have an opportunity to reach people that in your life that I may never meet. That your youth minister may never meet. Uh, that your elders may never meet. Your deacons may never meet. But they may meet Christ through you. Are you willing to take the time and that opportunity to plant the seed? I think sometimes we want to think that we must convert. We must be the converters. And we must have these discussions and get into these, to, to these, these debates or, or say, you know, I don't know how to convert someone. The thing is, you plant a seed. We're here to plant a seed. Paul planted, Apollos watered, but who provides the increase? Did Paul? If Paul was the one that provided the increase, maybe the Corinthians were right when they said, I'm of Paul. And some said, I'm of Apollos. If Apollos was the one that provided the increase, maybe that'd be okay. This is Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God provides the increase, the yield. And neither he who plants or he who waters is anything but God who gives the growth. So our business, our goal is to spread the seed as much as possible. And we understand this word, the word of God is the seed, not your opinion. Not my opinion, not your favorite verse, the scripture in its context, in its entirety. Anyone who hears, who is that? The soil. Did you notice as the sower goes around, you see this picture of, of sowing seed. And maybe the picture this morning of talking about my garden, I had that tiller out and and I had set up rows and I had a specific place in which I was going to plant my, my crop. I had my son who specifically placed the seed in, in the exact location that his little finger decided. That's not the picture of the sower. He cast the seed out. And you see the different kinds of soil that is that, it, that the seed lands, lands on. We understand that 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 is the result of the gospel being proclaimed. You don't see a sower saying, you know what, look at that soil. I think I'm wasting my time for casting the seed on that side. You know, you know if we were to think that, sometimes we've looked at individuals and thought, that's not good soil. Or we've said, I'm wasting my time in trying to reach that kind of soil. We may not say it out loud. We may think it. If we think it, we're not going to do it. Notice who the good soil was. Who is the good soil? The fine, upstanding citizen. The, the, uh, the taxpayer. The, uh, the uh, fine American no. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case, a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. You see, the soil is shown by what the result is. When the gospel is proclaimed, we do not know who will hear that message and it will take hold in their understanding and their obedience. And, and I mention this to say, my, my mother, when she was, before, when she was a young lady, she was, uh, I mentioned before, she did not grow up in the church. She didn't grow up in a, in a Christian household in any way. 
But she's an artist, and so she started studying these art, art depictions about this man named Jesus and, and started seeing that there's got to be something more. And so she actually got a Bible, and she started reading her Bible. She rode her bicycle to the closest church building she could find, and it was a Pentecostal church building. And, and, uh, and so she started attending the services there, and she experienced some interesting things that happened, which resulted in her not wanting to go back because she didn't see the matching in what she was reading in her Bible. And, and so, unbeknownst to a Bible study that was going on, she heard about a Bible study in her college dorm. And unbeknownst to this, this group of young people, these young Christians who were studying, they thought my mother was a Pentecostal. And the leader of the group said, she's Pentecostal, she'll ruin the study, don't let her come. She went anyway. And from studying in that, in, in that group session, she eventually repented of her sins and she was baptized in the name of Jesus. And she was added to the church. And you know... That young man, he was a young man, he was a young Christian, and he, he looked at my mother and said, she's bad soil. You know, if, if it were me, what would I have done? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't believe I would want to study with that individual. Uh, and if that, if that were the case, my future wouldn't be here if my mother did that. I, I think we need to recognize that we are, to he, we are here to throw the gospel to whoever will hear it. To proclaim the message. It is not up to you to think whether someone will hear it or not. It's up to you to proclaim it. Unashamedly and in love. So that people will hear the message of truth. And you know, we got a wonderful blessing today in seeing good soil. We got a wonderful blessing in seeing Brother Steve Brown in his life. In the celebration of that life. Receiving his eternal reward. And how many, how many people were here that represent the 60, the 100, or the 30-fold from the life that he lived? You see, the good soil is it's, it's something when you hear the word of God and you take hold of it and you obey it till the day you die. Are you the good soil this evening? We understand that the soil was those who heard the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. Have you allowed the seed to be implanted within your heart? The seed that you heard the word of God? Have you received with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls? James 1 and verse 21. Have you been watered? Being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. If not, you have an opportunity to become a part of the good soil. Don't let anyone ever say that you represent the stony soil. That you represent the soil that is surrounded by thorns and weeds. You, by obeying the gospel message and being convicted by the Spirit through His Word... Can make the change. And you can become the good soil. And you can produce. Within yourself. And God can produce through you. As he provides the increase. A hundred. Sixty and thirty. Fold. In your life. Are you working for the kingdom? Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom? Tonight. If you're not a part of it. This invitation is for you. But if you've, if, you, if you've been struggling and you have not put your trust in God, this is an also an opportunity for you to come asking for prayers and encouragement. If you have a need tonight, won't you come? As together we stand and sing.